Okay, let's continue with domain and range. Um, if you look at this example here, you can see arrows. This means we're going forever in both directions. So I think if I was going to say what the domain is, I would say any real number. There is no restrictions. You can go from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say for the domain. X is a real number. I don't need to say anything else. There's no restriction. Okay, for interval, I would say negative infinity to infinity. Okay, I mean, there's another way you could do the set notation. I don't think you should do this. You could go like this. So X is between negative infinity and infinity, but I think that's more work than it has to be. Okay, range. Range is the same. Any real number. Okay, so y is a real number. And negative infinity to infinity. Now, the good news about that, the domain and range are pretty easy for a line that goes on forever. That's going to be our whole next unit, linear relations, a line that goes on forever. Okay, so keep that in mind. If I ask you for domain and range, should be free marks. Okay, next one, domain. From negative 2 to 2, that's what I want to say. Negative 2 to 2. Okay, how do I write that? I'm going to say negative 2 up to 2. Notice I'm including both negative 2 and 2. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. That was down here. How do I do it here? I want to put x between negative 2 and 2. Okay. How about range? Well, range goes from 0 up until 2. So we'll go 0 to 2. And we'll put 0 to 2. Okay, 0 to 2. Okay, note in general, if you're describing the domain and range of a function, only use a list. Okay, list, I mean, use these brackets. If you have data that is discrete or if you have unconnected data values on a graph. Okay, we'll keep more examples. You'll see what I mean even right here. Okay, determining the domain and range of the graph of a situation. So this graph shows time, number of boats in a harbor at any given time. Okay, you should think of that data as being discrete because, of course, there's no way I can have half a boat. Okay. The problem is you might be thinking, but time is continuous. I mean, I can go at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10, 15, 10, 16. All right. But number of boats would make this discrete data. Okay. Identify the dependent variable. The dependent variable would be number of boats. The independent variable is time. Why are the points on the graph not connected? I think the easiest thing to say here is cannot have half a boat. The data is discrete. I guess we could say the data are discrete because data is plural, but it just sounds weird. So we'll leave it as is discrete. Okay, determine the domain and range. Ooh, this is going to be a little tricky. Sorry for the interruption. Domain. Well, in this graph, it looks like we want to go from, our first point is at 9 o'clock, and our last point is here at whatever time this is. Okay, I think that's 14, 15, 16 o'clock. 
So I think what we should do for domain is say from 9 to 16 because it's continuous. On the other hand, the range, I think we're only going to list the values that are given. Okay, what are the values? Uh, looks like 25, 10, 8, 6, 6 happens twice, 10 happens again, 11, and 15. All right. Next question, determine the domain and range values. So this is not just domain and range, this is specific values. So this graph, this equation is graphed right here. Okay, and it says determine the range value when the domain is negative two. So this is saying X is negative two. So if I go to X is negative two and I go to the graph here, what am I ending up at? Uh, looks to me like it's about 13. Uh, let's say y equals 13. Okay, similarly, determine the domain value when the range value is 4. Well, here's range is 4. Right there. What is the domain value? Looks like 1. So x is 1. Okay, that is the end of the lesson, and you can now do exercise 28.